him leading me in this direction, uh, which led me to make a decision and be more specific. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I had planned to have a conversation with my wife tomorrow. But that's not what he wanted. He wanted me to have that conversation today. The stakes are really high, but because of him, now I have the boldness and the confidence of confronting things that take me out of my comfort zone. Um, so the conversation went the complete opposite of what I had played out in my mind. <laughs> I was, I was going with this mentality that as soon as I dropped the bomb, we were gonna get into an argument and all this stuff and whatnot, and nothing like that happened. I believe that the Lord opened a door for me to plant a seed. And now that that seed's been planted, whatever happens, uh, after today, I still know that the seed is going to grow and it's going to produce the fruit that he wants. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> I started thinking, I'm going, I'm going about this and I'm scared, but why do I have to be afraid, you know? And then that led me to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God hath, hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So I know that I will be fine because he makes me brave and he calls me out beyond the shore into the waves like Jesus called, I believe it was Peter, come walk towards me when he was in the water. And I know that no fear can hinder the promises that he made. Amen. So, Amen. that's my little message for today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Something else I want to share. For the past few months, I've been trying to get some of my relatives to come over. And every time that I try to do something, it doesn't work out. And I keep forcing it, it doesn't work out. Well, I said, I'm not going to do it anymore. But then all of a sudden, now that I'm moving, then my sister called me the same day that I made the decision. Hey, I want to come visit. So now she's coming, and so is my mother. Praise the Lord. And they're going to be here with me for about 38 days. Wow. So, oh, I'm going to stop trying to force things. I'm going to let him do it. I'm just going to sit back. All right, Lord. Let's take shotgun. Anyway, uh, anyone has any prayer requests, testimonies they would like to share? No? Yes, James.
something that I want to share. Um, my brother made it to Texas in one piece. It took him three days driving a truck with his wife and his two kids. Um, so my brother is really funny because he uh, haggles with people and all this stuff and whatnot. So the, real, the, uh, the realtor was supposed to leave the key to the house in one of those uh, little locks that they use. <coughs> so when he got to the house, it wasn't there, so he had to spend the night in a hotel. So the next morning, he went to the realtor's office. Hey, I'm here for the house, blah, 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 and the key. By the way, here's the bill what you owe me for <laughs> how long you spend the night in a hotel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so they're, they're going to pay for it. Um, but... I feel that he is now where he's supposed to be. Uh, my mom has been looking for churches around the area for him to go with his family, and uh, she feels a church that she says she's kind of looking into uh, on the church and, and all that, and, and she says that based on what she's seen, it's gonna be a good church for him. Turns out the pastor and his wife are uh, Puerto Ricans, so. He's gonna feel uh, a little bit at home, at least. He's, he's gonna be understood. Um, so yeah, his kids started school today. My niece's first experience was to milk a cow. Uh, she was all excited. Uh, so yeah, it's gonna be good for him. I know it's gonna grow a lot. So. Mike, you were gonna say anything. Uh, Thank our Heavenly Father for bringing us together. Father, thank you for your presence. We thank you, Father, for giving us your revelation, your word. We thank you, Lord, for the promises that you make, Father, for, for bringing us here to be gathering your name so that your Holy Spirit, your revelation comes forth and miracles happen in our life, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your provision. Because everything that you do for us, Lord, is a blessing. Whatever, however little it might seem in our eyes. When it comes from you, Lord, we know that it is a blessing. Father, right now, we present to you those that are in need. Guide our steps. Protect us on our journey, Father. Take us to wherever it is that we're going. Safe. Keep us there. And whatever it is that's going to happen in your mighty
Mighty name will, will manifest. We will see your glory magnified. Thank you, Father, for bringing families together, for opening doors that no man can close. Thank you, Father, for choosing us to be your children. Thank you, Jesus. We lift those that are in need of healing right now. doing so many great things in this church and when people start coming and they start being touched by the Holy Spirit, oh man I'm, I'm bracing myself for yeah. all the amazing things that we're going to see it's going to be good get a goosebumps uh, okay announcements this Friday we have uh, Eastern Gatehouse Prayer it's going to be a good time um, what are we going to focus on? We're going to pray upstairs and downstairs for all the ministries involved, for leadership, the leaders that are coming, uh, for those that are being drawn here by the, to the north and the south and the east and the west, uh, the ministries involved for the fullness of the message that is getting forth from this place to, it, it just seems like it's caught in a bubble. I'm just praying that the Holy Spirit just pop that bubble and just let it fly. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so uh, it's going to be an awesome time. And I'm already seeing next month, <clears throat> next month, we will have worship going on, but I need uh, a praying, we'll be praying about it even this Friday night for prayer warriors to come in. You know, Tim and, and Lee was in here last time and, and others were in here this last time and have simultaneous prayer going on up here, downstairs, going all through this place, continual prayer as the worship team is just going after the throne room of God, just, just this multi facets of things going on. I see, I see it happening. So that's next month, but this month we're going to focus to concentrate uh, what's coming. Praise um, God. Just be in unity. Hallelujah. Praise God. <clears throat> Alright, well let's speak the word. Will you not yeah, revive us again <clears throat> that your people may rejoice in you. Hallelujah. Thank you. I am a believer and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick and they do recover. Hallelujah. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. And Abraham's blessings are mine. Hallelujah. Praise James, could you take the offering, please?
you, Lord Jesus. As James has come forth, I, I, um, I lift up Dean. I know he mentioned colonoscopy yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's, he's having a birthday dinner tonight. He's having a birthday dinner. Yep. Okay. Yep. But just want to lift him up. Um, everything is yep. right on schedule. Everything's yep. right on time. I know the Lord's got a plan. Mm -hmm. uh, just lift him up to you right now. Mysteries live by sacrifice. God lived in love, gave up his life. He ransomed back the lost and damned. And he can prize justice to man. As he was broken, but heavenly broken, our victory lifted, our sins are clear. With loving kindness, freely advise us into the realm of grace. As he was scorned and crucified, he tore the veil, breached the divine, taking us from darkness to light. As he was broken, heaven was open, our church been lifted, our sins committed, his loving kindness, freedom and pride us. Into the realm of grace. Sing a new song. Sing of his grace.
the north, the south, and the east, and the west. Give them up. Give them up.
Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for that glory that shines down through the ages, Lord. For your precious presence, Lord, that never leaves us or forsakes us. Thank you, Lord, for always being our provision. For whatever the need is, you are perfect for that need, Lord. We bless you tonight, Lord. We just praise you and thank you for your great love, your compassion, your goodness. Lord, how you love us. We are so thankful, Jesus, to know you and that it's all you. You've revealed yourself to us, not because of our wisdom or even our hunger, but because of your goodness and your grace. Lord, we just believe that you will continue to show yourself mighty on our behalf. More than enough for any situation or circumstance. We trust you tonight, Lord, for you are a great and a mighty God, a God of love, God of mercy, God of fellowship and relationship, our Father, our Savior, and our soon coming King. And we bless you tonight in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody said praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God praise bless you. Praise God. Thank you, worship team. Great, great job. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Good to be back. Hallelujah. God is good. Just really feeling the presence of the Lord here tonight, especially in that last song. Maybe it just took me that long to get in the spirit. Praise the Lord. But amen. God is good. Thank the Lord. Praise God. I want to thank everybody for your prayers and uh, those of you that were aware of my mother's passing away we didn't say a whole lot about it she was 92 and she knew the lord and believe me she's not feeling 92 to this evening she's she's dancing all over heaven with uh, family members and loved ones that have gone on before but i'm just so thankful for the lord and how good he's been to not just to me, but my family over the years. And, you know, it's just, God has a way of working all things out perfectly. Amen. And uh, Amen. he's a good God, Amen. believe me. He's good when things are going good. He's good when things are going bad. He's still good. Praise the Lord. You, we can always depend on him. Praise God. I thank him for his strength over the last few weeks. and Over the years, but especially the last week or so. He has been so faithful, and I'm so grateful for it. Praise the Lord. All right, tonight I'd like you to turn with me to the book of Mark. And we'll read a couple of verses to begin with here from Mark chapter 7, verse 24 through 26. From thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into a house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. Praise the Lord. So I just want to talk to you tonight about some ways to approach God, how we approach God. And it's not just, there isn't just one way or one uh, individual perfect uh, approach, but I just want to talk about a couple tonight and how God responds and, and how we connect with God. Most people believe that there are two options, basically, and, and that is that God is a bloodthirsty tyrant who needs constantly to be appeased by good behavior if not an outright sacrifice of some kind. Or he's a spiritual force that we can access anytime we want to, no questions asked, period. But Mark tells us a story here showing 
that approaching God might be something else entirely. Amen. You know, Jesus left this Jewish group of people, this province, this Jewish population, and he went into a Gentile territory, and he went there for a reason. He went there to get some rest. Yeah. He went to get away from the crowds, from the constant demands that were being placed on him. But it didn't work. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Syrophoenician, this Gentile, this pagan, this woman comes to him and tells him about her daughter who has this unclean spirit. And she knows, living in such proximity to a Jewish province, that she hasn't got any business doing this. That she's considered unclean. According to the culture, she's disqualified. She has no right to approach any devout Jew, least of all a rabbi. Mm -hmm. And yet, she does it anyway. She, she still does. She comes to Jesus. Now, let me just say this. There, there are cowards. There are regular people. And there are heroes. But then there's another category that really isn't affected by any of those, and that's a parent. Praise the Lord. A parent will do whatever it takes to do what needs to be done for their child. They somehow supersede all the categories that we think of as heroes and cowards and everything else. Because no matter what your personality, you can be timid, you can be, you know, brash, but when it comes to doing what needs to be done for your kid, you'll do it regardless of what your personality is. It's just the nature of, of a good parent, of a real parent. But Jesus' response to this woman is in Mark, let's look at this again in Mark chapter 7, 26, uh, excuse me, Mark 7, verse 26 and 27. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it under the dogs. Now, in the New Testament, dogs were filthy. They were scavengers. They were wild. They were not pets the way we think of them today in general. In, in, in Israel, uh, dogs you know, were not something that they loved. They weren't like we think of them today in, in most cases. They were just wild, ravenous scavengers. So for a Jew to call someone a dog was an insult. Yeah. For anybody to call someone a dog, it was an insult. But Jews often called Gentiles dogs because they were considered unclean. So is Jesus insulting this woman here? The answer is really no. Now, I've heard it preached all kinds of ways, but I, I've been looking at this over the last several days, and it's a parable. It isn't an insult. Jesus is trying to get a truth across to people. It's a parable. It's, a parable is just simply a metaphor or, or a likeness, and that's what this is. And the key to understanding it is the unusual word that Jesus uses for dogs. And I just looked it up again tonight. I, I looked this up years ago. And I, in fact, I had it written in the, on the margin of my Bible. But I looked it up again to get the number and everything again. But I can tell you that the actual word that he uses is the diminutive term for dogs. And it's actually kunarion, which means puppies. He, didn't, he wasn't insulting her. He was just telling a story, telling a parable. And remember, this woman's a mother. And so Jesus is saying to her, you know how families are. First the children eat at the table, and then the pets eat. Mm -hmm. They get the scraps. They get what's left over. Right. And he says it's not right to violate this order. Right. The 
puppies must not eat food from the table before the children do. Look at verse, uh, look at verse 24. Well, let's look at this. Matthew 15, 22 through 26. Let's just look at these in total here for a moment. Matthew 15, 22 through 26. Behold, a woman of Canaan came out. Now, this is the longer version of the same story. Matthew tells it a little bit longer than, than Mark does, but it's the, same, it's the same event. Behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Now let's look at, again, look at verse 24. He answered and said, I'm not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Jesus, when he came here, he came initially to show Israel that he was the fulfillment of all of the prophets, all of the priests, all of the kings. He was the fulfillment of the temple of everything that had ever taken place under the Jewish laws and uh, understanding was to point to him. Yes. But after he was resurrected, if you remember, he immediately says to his disciples, go to all nations. Yes. Right? Yes. So initially he's coming to his own. Right. His own reject him. Right. Then he goes to everybody. Then it, this, is, this is for everybody. Mm -hmm. So his words in Mark are not an insult. He's telling the Gentile woman, please understand there's an order here. There is a spiritual order that I'm following. Right. I'm going to Israel first, then the Gentiles, other nations, right? right? All right, now let's go back to Mark chapter 7, verse 28 through 30. She answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. The dogs eat under the table, yet, yes, Lord, yet the dogs or the puppies under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, for this saying, go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Yep. In other words, she says, yes, Lord, but the puppies eat from that table too, and I'm here for mine. Praise the Lord. Jesus had told her a parable in which he's given her a challenge and an offer within the same parable. She responds to the challenge. The challenge is, you're not supposed to be here. You're not a Jew. You don't have a right to approach. Legally, you're beyond your rights. Okay, she says, I get it. I'm not from Israel. I don't worship the God of Israel. So I don't have a place at the table. I accept that. It's amazing. She's not offended. Right. She accepts the situation as it is. She says, all right, I may not have a place at the table, but there's more than enough on that table for everyone in the world. Come on. And I need mine now. Come on. Right. Woo! Praise the Lord. She's not saying, Lord, give me what I deserve on the basis of my goodness or my religion or my attitude. Mm -hmm. But she's saying, give me what I don't deserve based on the basis of your goodness, yes. and I need it now. <coughs> Praise the Lord. She understands the purpose of Israel's Messiah better than Israel understands it. Yeah. Praise God. She trusts in the sufficiency of, and the surplus of Jesus. Its provision for Israel is so abundant that it's enough to provide for somebody like her as well. Praise God. The irony is, Jesus is desperately trying to get his disciples to understand this truth. And yet, they're dull. They're not comprehending. Look at Matthew. Let's go back to Matthew 15, verse 23. Jesus answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, 
She's bugging us. She wants you. She's, she's trusting you. Get her out of here. These are the ones closest to him, and they don't understand it at all. But after one sentence from the mouth of Jesus, she understands his mission. This woman, think about this. This woman is the first person to understand a parable of Jesus. He's telling parables, and he's saying, I'm telling you parables because I don't want the people that aren't supposed to know to know. Well, nobody's getting it. You watch, if you read any of his disciples, immediately come to him after every one of these parables and say, what was that all about? I mean, after he turns the bread, you know, feeds the multitudes the next day, uh, he, he's talking to the Pharisees, and he says, you know, uh, he's talking about the bread again similar to what he's saying here, and the disciples immediately think, who is supposed to bring lunch? Which one of you guys has got the food basket, you know? They're all freaking out because they think he's talking about dinner. They just, they didn't, they didn't get it, praise the Lord. So this woman is the first person. She answers Jesus from within the parable. She doesn't come from outside of it and start asking other questions like, what does that mean? What does this mean? She responds within the context of the parable that he's teaching. Right. Right? right? Or that is what she's doing is in the term by which Jesus addressed her, she responds. Mm -hmm. Meaning she's the first person in the gospel to hear the word of Jesus to her. Yep. Now, he, he is the word become flesh, and he's releasing words to people all the time, but she's the first one to actually receive the word. Praise God. Now think about this. You see, it's just as much a rejection of God and His love to refuse to seek Him, to refuse to come to His mercy, to refuse to accept His grace, to refuse to be content with it. Amen? She gets it. She understands there's grace here, there's mercy here. E even though it doesn't look like it's for me, if I go for it, if I go and accept it, I can get it. I can have it. See, it's not based on anything. Our religion, our, our good works, our bad works, our mess-ups, our screw-ups, if we look to God for His mercy, for His grace, it's there. It, it will be given because there's more than enough for everybody. His sufficiency is super abundant. His grace where sin abounds, grace doth that much more abound. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's just as wrong to not go after His mercy, to not pursue His grace, to not expect His goodness and His mercy, as it is to say that I'm too good for it, or I'm too bad for it. Let's look again here at Mark chapter 7. This time I want us to look at verse 31 through 37. Because sometimes it's like God shows up for you and it's like an accident. Sometimes it's us <clears throat> saying, God... I, I, I'm, I receive your grace. I receive your mercy. I receive your healing. I believe for the abundance of all that you have that there's more than enough for me as well. Sometimes we go where, where we don't feel that we have a right to go. We haven't been good enough. We're, we're not, quote unquote, the, the most religious or the most perfect. God says, if you'll just believe me, if you'll trust me, it's available for you. There's more than enough. And sometimes, God just shows up. We just, we, we just go, wow, I needed it, but I wasn't even expecting it. And that's what's happening here. Again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came into the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. And they bring unto him one that was deep, and had an impediment in his speech, which 
goes without saying. If you can't hear, you don't speak well. And most of us have heard people who have hearing and things, ah, 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 you know, and it's hard. They can't hear themselves, so it's hard for them to make words out of, you know? It's always distorted and, and kind of not fully formed. So they bring in this deep one who had an impediment in his speech, and they beseech him to put his hand upon him. And he took it. This is Jesus now. Jesus took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears. He spit them, and he touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and saith unto him, Epatha, that is, be opened. And straightway his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plain. And he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them, so much the more a great deal they published it. And were beyond measure astonished, saying, He hath done all things well. He maketh both the deep to hear and the dumb to speak. Amen. So Jesus immediately takes this guy away from the crowd. Now, we take this out of context, but I've, I've read this and reread this trying to figure this out because we think about that Jesus spit on the guy's tongue. That's not what happened. What Jesus did was he points to his ears. He touches his own tongue. He puts saliva, and he takes his own saliva and puts it on the other guy's tongue. He didn't spit in his mouth or anything, but that's what he's doing. He goes like this, goes like this, and then touches the guy. So we, we look at it and we say, okay, what is this, some, some drama thing? Is this like a, uh, uh, you know, a, a ritual of some kind that, because, that, you know, come on, we see people and then they want to repeat what Jesus did, thinking that there was some kind of power in the, the act, the exercising of it. But that's not the case. Because he calmed the sea without raising his voice. He raised Jairus' daughter without any kind of show whatsoever. He, he actually doesn't do any yelling. He doesn't, there's no mumbo jumbo. Because he doesn't need to perform to summon power. The power is within him. And this is where we as quote unquote Pentecostals and Charismatics sometimes miss it. Because we're, we're, we're going through a lot of gyrations and things that are not really necessary. Now, I understand we get excited, and that, so that, you know, when we, that's one thing, because I do that myself, and we get a little louder, and that's okay. God is not hard of hearing, but he's not nervous either, so <laughs> praise the Lord, it's all good. But, but we don't see Jesus doing a lot of the gyrations and things that sometimes we see with <laughs> preachers and evangelists and so forth. Because Jesus is doing this with this deep mute, because the deep mute needs it. Mm -hmm. Jesus doesn't need it. The rest of the people don't need it. The deep mute needs it. Yep, yep. It's sign language. Mm -hmm. yep. He takes him aside because the guy has been humiliated all of his life. Right. He's been a spectacle. Right. He's all the time to talk. He can't, he can't hear him. And he's trying to express himself and everybody's always laughing at him. Making fun of him. And ridiculing. So Jesus takes him aside because he doesn't want him to be humiliated anymore. Right. Jesus identifies with the guy. He identifies with this isolationist, this, this uh, uh, humiliation, the mockery. And so he takes him aside and, and he begins to use something that the guy can understand. Sign language. Hearing? No. Speaking? No. And then he touches him. Wow. Jesus emotionally connected with this guy. Now the reason this is interesting is because I looked this word up where they use the word deaf and mute and the, actually the words that they use there is mogli lalos. And it's only used twice in the entire Bible. And so it's like Mark is saying, I want, you've got to cross-reference this word. Because it's nowhere else that it's used, that these words are used this way. And the only other place that it's used in the Bible is in Isaiah 35. Mm. We'll read 4 through 6. So it's like Mark is saying, I, you've got, there's something going on here that you need to understand. 
So say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. That's that word. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. Praise the Lord. So here's what's, here's what's happening. Isaiah says that the Messiah will come to save us with divine retribution is the actual translation. Now, Jesus isn't smiting people here. He's not taking out his sword. He's not taking power. He's giving it away. He's, he's not taking over the world. He's serving it. Where's the divine retribution? He came to bear it. We see it one way. He's establishing it in a completely different way. Yes. On the cross, Jesus would identify with us totally. Yes. On the cross, the child of God was thrown away, cast away from the table without a crumb. So those of us who are not children of God could be accepted and brought in. Or you could say the child had to become a dog so we dogs could become sons and daughters Come on. of God. Come on. Amen. Doesn't the psalmist say, he prepareth the table before me mm -hmm. in the presence of my enemies. Because Jesus identified like that with us, now we know that we can approach him in any situation, under any circumstances. The son became a dog, so we dogs could be brought to the table. Look at Matthew chapter 27, verse 12. I'll show you the parallels here these two encounters. When he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he became mute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't speak. Mm -hmm. He answered not a word. Mm -hmm. there it is. He became mute so that we can rebuke the, den the enemy, so that we can declare his praises. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. He became mute and a victim, and they overcame him, the enemy, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their own lives unto death. It is nothing short He became us in order to take all of our weaknesses, our sins, our shortcomings, so that we could have all of his blessings, rewards, and promises. There's no perfect approach to God. It's just approach. It's just come. Whosoever will come mm -hmm. shall be saved. Hallelujah. If you can come and believe, there is abundance, more than enough for your healing, for your deliverance, for your finances, for anything and everything that we see as lack, anything that the enemy has come and stolen. God has prepared a table before us overflowing with provision. And he's done it right in the face of the 
thief, the liar, and the murderer. Amen. That's our Jesus. Hallelujah. That's, that's our puppy. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give him a praise tonight. Thank you. <laughs> praise the Lord. God bless everybody. I appreciate you all being out tonight. And uh, stay safe. Be happy. And eat plenty from the table. Hallelujah. It's all good. In Jesus' name. You're dismissed in the name of the Lord.